sorry that I had a screwed up opening there, but, but I'd do it again. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett. It is the ramble. Uh, I, you know, I screw up on stuff, and then I gotta. I just want to get a clean start on the program for the uh, uh, for the recording that we make of it. So here we are. Here we are. There we go. Uh, let me see here. What are, what are we going to do? Oh, yeah, we're going to go talk to an old friend of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, always a pleasure to talk to the inimitable Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay! Not always a pleasure to talk to the great Alex Bennett. Yay! His wide-ranging knowledge is amazing. Well, you I... know, as long as I've known you, I think we're both... Uh, I assume we're both kind of atheistic, agnostic, but I, I've never really talked to you about religion. I always want to get your take on that. Well, I mean, religion, uh, as uh, Karl Marx once said, is the opiate of the people. Uh, and, and I think a no truer statement has been made, to be very honest with you. You know, um, uh, it, it is, it's a pacifier, and it's also a con job for people to make money. I mean, why does a priest have a job? Because somebody believes in God. And if they stop believing in God, he's out of work. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of like a doctor who's got to find something wrong with you so he can keep making money. You know, so he, he, he has you come back and you do confession or you do this, you do that. Uh, you know, you, uh, uh, you know I, I don't believe in God People always ask me, do you believe in God? And I went, no, but I believe in science. You know, I believe mm -hmm. there is a wonder and majesty to the universe, which uh, is pretty unexplainable because it's so huge and so vast. And so many years have passed to create just this little planet took several billion years. All right. Um, so that being the case... Uh, uh, I, I realize there is something in the universe that's bigger than we are, but I don't think it's a, a sentient being called God. Right. It's just, it's incredible to me that so many people uh, just uh, fall into these fairy tales, basically what they are, all religions. And Yeah. I just had to go close the door. My door is open and we have guests staying, so I had to close it. Uh, what were you saying about so many people? What? So many people buying these fairy tales. I just—it's incredible to me. I, I think it's partly, uh, I think it's partly because people know they're going to die and they can't accept that, and they—they they have to think there's something after this. Well, I don't know that there isn't something after this, but I don't know what it is exactly. You know, um, uh, and it's not that I want to keep existing. That's not the—that's uh, not the point here. Okay. Uh, it, it it has to do with uh, uh, what is it? How can I put it? It has to uh, to do with the fact. Well, let me give you an example. Uh, there's a show called The Planets, and it's on the BBC, and they talk about the creation of the planets, and they they throw off terms like four billion years ago, like it was spare change. Mm -hmm. You know, four billion years ago, Mars was created because blah 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 blah. What happened was there were all these little particles of dust that came together and made boulders, and then those boulders made bigger boulders, and they clashed into each other, and eventually we had planets. And that process took two billion years. Okay? So I'm watching all of this. I'm going to begin with, how insignificant am I? You know, my lifespan up till now is 79 years, and we're talking about two billion years to create a planet. So I'm pretty insignificant. You know, I'm just a passing dust particle in this <laughs> whole thing. So as I'm watching this, I'm going, well, then, what, where do I fit into this? You know, and uh, somebody, uh, I'm trying to remember who now, uh, said we are, we are made of the stuff of stars. You know, we are part of all of this, you know, and when we, when we leave this, we go back to that. Somehow that makes a little bit of sense, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know what my cosmic being is going to be. I think he's going to be a hypochondriac. That's for damn sure. <laughs> but I, I don't know, you know. I mean, what happens when we die? Well, I mean, 
I don't understand not existing. I can't, I can't cope with that, okay? Uh, and my father, I always like to tell this, my, I said to my father once that I was afraid of death and I couldn't understand what it was like. And he said, well, you've been there before. Exactly. He said, before you were born, you didn't exist. And eventually you will not exist any longer. So you know what it's like not to exist. And so for the rest of my life, I worried about what it was like before I was born. You know, so... Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, we were yeah. all there once before. We were that, and now we're going back to it again. Now, is there reincarnation? Well, if there is reincarnation, you're not aware of it. So, um, like, if I was reincarnated, I don't know that. So am I then aware that this... It's just... I don't know. I just don't have an answer to it. But I don't. I don't believe in God as they believe in God. Okay. So, uh, I, I hate. I hate uh, what uh, people win Academy Awards, and I want to thank the. I want to thank God for this. And or I'm when going, they win a football game. <laughs> yeah, I want to thank God. Like God is watching a fucking football game and cares <laughs> about you running down a field. <laughs> to cheering thousands okay no no god doesn't give a shit about that he's got more important things to do like try and solve the problem of why he fucked up with the prostate you know um so yeah the uh the poor there's been many the human body actually is very poorly designed in many ways so god should answer for that yeah he should he should answer for my prostate problems now you know the fact that at 80, my age, is a 70% chance I have prostate cancer, and it looks like I probably do. No big deal. It's very slow-growing. It's, it's a different cancer than any other kind of cancer. But nevertheless, hey, God, you know, to begin with, you put that, that prostate there, which is a donut-shaped organ, and in the middle of it, you put the urethra where your pee goes through. And as you get older, it enlarges and squeezes on that, and you have to pee like every five minutes. What was with that construction, God, if you're so <laughs> almighty and so all-knowing? Wouldn't you have just moved the prostate over a couple of inches? That's uh, worse design than GM on their it, 80s cars. I want my, uh, yeah, and there's no warranty on this. There's no warranty, you know. So, you know, what, but, but it, 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 tell me about your non-belief in God and what you think happens to us when we die. Oh, I'd say pretty much what you think. It'd just be non-existence. And yeah, but and uh, don't I've had the, I've had a couple of, uh, dreams uh, where I've died, where I've died, and I'm I'm really? like I'm floating through space and slowly decaying, and it's very cold. And the the dreams are actually it wasn't it wasn't reassuring. I didn't like it. That is really a Larry Bubbles Brown dream, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I've had that one twice. So. You've had that one. Tw oh my God. Yeah. Oh. That's terrible, Larry. Yeah, and it's getting colder and colder and darker and horrible. Wow. I've never had that dream. Never had a dream about, you know, what it's like after I'm dead. So you're very fortunate that you've had that dream. Is it a we, night is it a nightmare or is it is there something about it no, that it's is, not scary, but it's just it's not all it's also not reassuring, so Well, wouldn't that be terrible if you're going through space and, and, and you're slowly decaying? Yeah. You know, well, then again, that's what happens here during life. So, you know, I mean. We're slowly decaying. Oh, I'm slowly. Or rapidly in I've, my case. I've got, you know, I've got the neuropathy in my feet, and I've got the uh, teeth that are having problems and having to be worked on, and I've got the pr possible prostate cancer. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm slowly decaying. I'm slowly falling apart. I had a friend of mine this last weekend, uh, J Jack Garfine, who at 88 got married, uh, wow. and uh, he could barely walk, all right? And I'm going, I'm about to hit 80. That You mean eight years from now, that's going to be my fate? You know, that it's going to be like that? You know, so I, you know, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I don't want to get older. Maybe, maybe eventually death is a welcome relief. That's what I'm... Uh, somebody said that who was... Some famous columnist who was dying, and he said some, 
sometimes you look on death as a kindly uncle. <laughs> as a kindly uh, uncle? Take him, take him away from all this crap. Oh, wow. That's cool. Kindly uncle. <laughs> kindly uncle death. <laughs> uh, uh, kindly uncle death. Yeah, uh, you know, and I have a lot. I'm sure you lately have had a lot of people you know who die. You know, once you start re yeah. reaching 60, once, you start, you know. Once you get over 60, and then as the, as the years go by, it's just going to accelerate the number of people you know they are dying. And a lot of deaths really bothered me, but you know the one that bothered me the most? Is a woman who died who I had fucked. I don't know, for some reason, that got to me, you know? I was once having sex with this woman, and now she's dead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are other, things, other ones that bother me a lot because they're people that are close to me, but that particularly made me feel as though I wasn't getting any younger. That was for damn sure. And she died in her sleep. She had a heart attack, you know. However, you know the story about Bob Rubin, don't you? I've heard this story. I didn't know it was true or not. Our friend Bob Rubin, the comedian, uh, was having sex with a woman one night, and she had a heart attack during the act and died right while he was fucking her. Okay, that's actually true. It's actually true. Wow. Well, okay, I thought it was just a bit he was doing. He, I said, how did that affect you? He said, well, I was put off on that for a couple of years, <laughs> you know. He, <laughs> You know, it, it, it gives a whole new perspective, I guess, to having sex with somebody, you know. <laughs> Either that or you, uh, uh, I said to him, here's what one guy says to another one. And I heard that story. I said, did you come first? <laughs> you know? And he went, well, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, but uh, also, isn't there a certain pride you can take is that you fucked a woman to death? Yeah. You know, that... <laughs> Literally fucked your brains out. Hey, I may have been affected by that, and it may have been a terrible thing, but look at what I did, you know. <laughs> That's such a great story. Yeah, no, it's a terrific story. Are you kidding me? It's the best. Uh, but anyway, so, um, uh, you know, uh, here we are talking about death, you know. And, I, and I, I have people I know, I mean, like this guy Jack is 88, hey. I may get a call tomorrow. Hey, Jack's no longer with us, you know. I mean, he's 88. Um, and as we get older, the people we know are older, so they start dying off. But a lot of them go younger than, than we are. Like my friend Dennis Hoffel on the Moonlight Bunny Ranch died at 62. Just I guess they found him in his room dead. You know, he just had a heart attack while he was sleeping. I guess I guess a majority of people have heart attacks. It's while they're sleeping, you know. Yeah. Uh, Partly because of the uh, sleep apnea. Of that could be, you know. But anyway, the point is that that when that happened, I went, well, gee, he's he's awfully young. That that amazes me, you know. And we had a friend, you and I, Robert Schimmel. Uh, Schimmel was a classic case of dying. How do you have a classic case of dying? Well, let me explain this to you, folks. Uh, Robert Schimmel had everything wrong with him you could possibly have wrong with you. I mean, he had he wrote a book called Cancer on five dollars a day. Uh, <laughs> he had any number of types of cancers which he beat, okay. And then he was having kidney problems and he was waiting on getting a kidney transplant when his daughter takes him out for a drive and plows the car into a tree and he dies. Yeah, the car that he had bought for her. Yeah. Yeah, but think about that for a second. He had all these other things. He had this, and his life was in turmoil. He had a son who, who died at like 15 because he had some kind of disease that he constantly went on the road to make money, to pay the doctors, to get him help, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it is the most, one of the most tragic lives. It starts out with his parents who survived a concentration camp, okay? And, 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 of all the things that could get him and all the things that were preying upon him, the thing that got him was his daughter driving into a tree. Yeah. Go figure. You know? Somebody, somebody should do a movie about his life. It was so interesting. Yeah. So, anyway, is this, a, is this a, an uplifting, folks, if you're listening? Kind of, do, you, do you enjoy well, this? There's been some very, uh, you and I were always kind of fascinated by death. I mean, so was Woody Allen. So there's some... Some good minds like to talk no, about it. No, I, I don't. I'm not fascinated by it. I fear it. And, and yeah. most of Woody Allen's work 
always contain that fear of dying. You know, uh, he, uh, I think, did I read somewhere that he said he finally has come to terms with it? That as he's I hadn't heard older, that. That'd be, I'd like to read that. Maybe that's why his movies aren't as good as they used to be. I don't know, you know. Uh, but I mean, he he uh, he was one who was supposedly had a, had a paralyzing fear of death. Mm-hmm. So you know, and, and look how old he is now. So he he lived uh, he he lived he's lived long enough. You know, I mean, if I go tomorrow, hey, seventy nine ain't bad. You know, but I'd like it to be a hundred and fifty. <laughs> you know. Or as my wife puts it, I want to live long enough to see Trump out of office. So, you know, imagine having to die and Trump's still president. That's not good. That could happen. That could happen. Well, I have a, you know, my ex-wife, Ronnie, is dying, literally dying. Uh, She has cancer. And we don't know how long she's going to live. But then again, you know, what's really strange is that if you fear death, it's because, you know, you don't know when you're going to when you're going to die. Uh, but when you know that you are dying, you, still, she's almost my age. So uh, it, it, she doesn't know how long she has. In spite of the fact that she knows she's dying. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, it's kind of the yeah. same as you and me. I could uh, tomorrow come down with something and die before she dies of the cancer she's got. So... You know, I often say to her, you know, how do you feel about this? She says, well, I don't know, you know, how long I've got. You know, doctors say it could be this, it could be that. We don't know. We'll see, you know. Um, So, I mean, aren't you the one that said uh, you want to know um, uh, when? No, uh, no, uh, wouldn't it be neat if you knew what day you were going to die, but not the year? Yeah, that's it. (laughs) Not the year. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I don't know how long I've got, but you know, as I get older, as as I reach this age, I start I start seeing that process happening to me, and it depresses me. I mean, if I'm alone in a room at night and Marjorie is asleep, I've never told her this. I go, go into a panic over this, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, I'm spending the rest of my life being depressed over the fact that I'm going to die soon. Now, soon for me, well, soon could be one minute. Soon could be another 20 years. My mother died at 100. But yeah. nevertheless, that's sooner than a lot of people who are like 30 are looking at being soon, you know. It's, you know so it, it, it's, who knows. But a belief in God, I, I'm jealous of people who believe in God. Because they've got an out. You know, they're comforted by this whole notion that, oh, well, if I die, I'm going to go see Uncle Uncle Bob again and Aunt Mary and, you know, and Cousin Susan. You know, so um, uh, th- th- that's nice they have that. I don't have that. You don't have that. No, but I, I'm, you're right, though. If you, if you did have that and truly believed it, you probably would be very happy. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm dying. But we're Go- not buying it. Goodbye, I'm going to see your mother, you know, or I'm going to see Aunt Maud. And uh, it's been nice, kids. Goodbye. <gasps> you know, the death rattle. I, I told you the story about my friend Marshall Efron, uh, who, and I don't even know if he's still alive, but Marshall Efron, who... Uh, for years was trying to get on the Dick Cavett show and couldn't quite pull it off until one day they booked him on the Dick Cavett show. So he goes on the Dick Cavett show and he's on there with this guy named Rodale who, who wrote books on how to live longer and so on. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know this story. And while, while, he, while Efron is being interviewed by Cavett and Rodale is on the couch next to him, all of a sudden, they hear this weird sound, which is known as a death rattle. It's supposedly some expulsion of air that you give when you die. And they look over, and Rodale is dead. They cancel the show. They don't broadcast it. And they never invite Marshall back because they consider him bad luck. <laughs> <He's> bad luck. <laughs> so, you know, what's worse than death? It's getting Banned from the Cavett show because you sat next to somebody who was inconsiderate and died. 
Uh, <laughs> and the guy just giving a speech about here's how you're going to be able to live longer. Oh, good. Yeah, I think he was the head of Prevention Magazine was the magazine that he uh, he ran. And, uh, you know, when guys go like that, like when Jim Fix went, remember Jim Fix, the runner? Right. And he, he did this thing on Jim Fix running. And if you run, you will live longer, blah, 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 dies running. Ah, I, I felt will, I felt I will jog in, yes. I felt really good about that one. You know, he as, did, he as fuck- did the uh, the guy that invented the power bar died while jogging. So. Really? Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, do you now? You you jog. You run. Yes, I'm going to run after this. You, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. could be our last talk. I don't know. Yeah, you run. Uh, how many days a week do you run? Yeah, every other day. So like four four a week. Four a week. Okay. Do you think that's having any negative effect upon your body? I think it's pounding my joints pretty badly. Yeah. Yeah. So you, there, there. So f- running is not the healthiest pastime you could take up. Probably not. I would think uh, the more I'm reading, I think probably walking is better than running. Uh, riding a bicycle. Yeah, that's bad for your prostate. Is it bad for your prostate? Really? This, this heat puts a lot of pressure. It makes a. Uh, there were some guys that uh, were Do you know reporting my... their impotent, young guys uh, reporting their impotent because it puts so much pressure on that in... nerve in the pro- around the prostate. You know, area. it's interesting, but my prost- PSA has gone up since I have been working out, and I do the cycle. That's all I do. Do 25 well, that minutes. That could be it. I... That seat puts a lot of pressure in that area. Yeah, it could be, yeah. But, uh, but, yeah. but, you know, that could be cause and effect. Yeah, it could be. You know, but what the hell? So, so the running, the, so you don't know that the running is not necessarily adding to your life, as it were. It's uh, well, it keeps the weight off, and it's lowered the cholesterol, so it's good for that. Oh, no, it's good for that. Yeah, it's good yeah. for the heart. You good know, for the heart, just uh, the the knees and the. <laughs> but there are a lot of other exercising you could do that's non-impact. Yeah, that that would uh, probably be just as good. I used to swim, which actually adds fat to your body, so that was not good. Well, it does, no, it does, but it adds muscle, not fat. It adds an extra, because your body, uh, because you submerge yourself in cold water, it starts to develop an extra layer of fat. Have you ever noticed people who, who do that, you know, uh, that they, um, um, uh, swimmers, they get, they have the swimmer's body. Have you ever noticed yeah. it? It's a, it's very unique. And I used to have swimmer's body because I used to swim a lot. Uh, now I have uh, old man falling apart <laughs> body. Man falling apart body. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> everybody, this is where you laugh. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think we're star stuff. I think something there's something to that. I, I mean, I look at the universe and I go, I'm just such a, you know, I, what I don't understand is why a guy like Donald Trump doesn't understand that he, in the total scheme of things, is insignificant. You know, right? That, that, <laughs> that this planet still has at least another billion years in it before it falls apart, and, and that he is just such a grain of sand in that time. That he doesn't matter, you know. Well, that reminds me of the uh, ones they uh, John Lovitz was grousing to Carvey about his career, and Carvey said, "John, do you realize after today there's going to be another billion years?" And Lovitz goes, "Well, then this means nothing." Yes, it means nothing, <laughs> and then you're an individual component, so it means even less. <laughs> you know how many how many people do we have on the planet Earth right now? So you take that, uh, that little grain of sand and you separate it into all those people. So why do we even care about a Donald Trump and why does he care about being king of the world? I don't understand it. It should be, it'd be something that we just don't even, you know. So that so watch that program on space. I think it's, it's on now in various okay, planets? areas. Planets? Planets, the planets. Okay. And you just sit there and you're in awe of the fact that all this happened over billions of years and that you're here for, you know, what, 80 years, 75 a flash. years? Oh, it's a flash in the pan. And, and so let's not take ourselves that seriously. Right. And let's spend the time we have here having a good time. Have you had a good time, Bubs? Uh, 
<laughs> one year out of one year out of ten, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm asking the wrong guy if he's having fun. I did find I did find a great place where you and I should retire. There's a, a place in Southern California called Mount Disappointment. <laughs> really? Yes. I looked at it on the map. I Is fell over. Mount Disappointment? Mount Disappointment. Uh, look, find out where it is. Let's see if there's any property available. <laughs> we have to buy a lot there just to say <laughs> we own a lot on Mount Disappointment. <laughs> Only you would find that. I know. I just was looking at a map and saw it. It just jumped out at me. It's, it's Southern California. Hey, listen, we've run out of time, Bubs. Well, it's been great talking about death and disappointment. When you, whenever I call you, you have something that you start me talking about. Yeah. And and this time it was death, and I feel so much better about death now. It's been very cathartic. No, I don't feel better about that. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry. Talk to you soon, Alex. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, you know, I screwed up again. See, I'm, I'm screwing up too much. I've got to quit this whole thing because I keep screwing up, and I don't like screwing up. I, uh, it's not good to screw up, okay? And uh, what happened was is usually when I do an interview with Larry, we put this up, okay? Uh, but I forgot to put it up, so what you got instead was that. And that will come back to me. Okay, anyway. Let me open up the uh, lines here. I, I don't know. I was just, I, the whole beginning of the show f- screwed up because I was trying to do something else at the same time that I was doing the opening of the show. And I didn't push the buttons at the right time. And I found out that uh, I was actually recording the show, but I wasn't streaming it. And I, had, I just had to start all over again. So please excuse me, folks, if I, uh, if I suck. Okay. Anyway, the phone lines are open, uh, so now I can just wait for you to call, and uh, we can uh, we can talk about stuff, you know, if if you want to. I'm tired tonight again. I you know, uh, I it, it, it's um, it's a medicine that I'm taking for the feet, for the numbness in the feet, and it it just makes me tired, and it makes me you know. I, I have to do simple tasks here, and it that doesn't allow me to do that. So maybe I have to quit drugs and just live in pain. Uh, and it's not a, uh, it's not uh, narcotic or anything like that. It's not like I'm not on the, what is it that uh, uh, hydrocodone or anything like that. You know, I'm just it's uh, gabapentin, and it's it makes it muddles me. So that's why I screwed up the beginning of the show. Nobody's gonna call. Because if you're not going to call, I'm just going to go. Because I'm, I'm tired as hell. I, 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 I would rather sleep, I think, uh, than do this show. Oh, well. But Jeff Stein ruined it for me. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Here comes Jeff. Uh, Jeff, I was almost going to go home and... Well, I am home. I would ju- <laughs> was almost going to quit and just uh, call, it, uh, call it an evening. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I don't need you there. Oh, because I've already got you there. Okay, well, we'll just uh, we'll just do it that way. Okay, all right, there we go. Hello, Jeff. How are you this evening? I'm I'm doing very good right now. You really are? Yeah, I'm. I'm very happy. You're oh, I'm doubling. You, you no, know, you're something's happening. No, I'm done. You're not hearing. Uh, I don't know yeah, what why, you're hearing. Why uh, are you hearing me now? Yeah, I'm hearing you fine. You, okay. You were breaking up a little bit. Hold on a second. Uh, here, much to our disdain, comes Phil Meyer. Uh, let me see here. Uh, there he is. And then we add him to the crowd. There we go. Hello uh, there, uh, Phil. Yes, what were you saying, uh, Jeff? Yes, I'm very happy. Uh, I was thinking about my wife today, how important she is to me sometimes. Really? Yep. That's sweet. That's yeah. nice. That's really good. Marjorie, yes, sometimes. Ma- Marjorie and I just got through just got through having a, a three day spat. So, but you probably have had those too. You know. Once, once, maybe twice. I'm not quite sure. Oh really? Uh, a our, week. 
twice a week, twice a day. I, well, I when I'm depressed about stuff, I go into like a, co- a cocoon, and yeah. then and then I t- I kind of take it out on her, and I really shouldn't, you know. But then again, I keep telling her, don't take it personally, and she takes it personally. So, how know. come uh, you can't choose not to be depressed? Hmm. Why can't you choose not to be depressed? Well, because it affects the people around me. Well, you choose to be depressed, and that affects the people around you. You could also choose not to be depressed. Yes, but I, I, I sometimes I can't help it, and that's why I need a shrink. Well, you know, we're not like snakes where you step on a snake and it bites you. We're we're people, and we have power over our reactions. No, no quit. Why all of a sudden are you becoming new new agey on us? Well, because it's the way I live. Oh, really? You yeah. could you could you could beat me over with a stick on that one. <laughs> well, it is, you know. Uh, oh, what uh, am I supposed? To, I'm not. I'm not taking you on as my guru. Okay. Well, have you ever read The Four Agreements by Ruiz? No. Well, isn't it about time you did? No. Is it porn? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, then send me, tell me where I can find it, and I'll, uh, I'll jerk off to it. Amazon. Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't believe in any, any of that. What I used to call newage stuff rhymes yeah. with sewage. Um, you know. Well, you can't lose anything by uh, by trying a, a different paradigm shift. Paradigm. Whatever. Yeah. Well, I, I no. I mean, uh, you know, I don't. I don't like being depressed. You know, I don't like being that way. But I am. You know, I mean, if you if you think uh, new age stuff is bullshit, and I'm I don't consider it new age. I just consider it. I'm in control of how I choose to react. Hmm. And and uh, and you are too. And you're just choosing to react well, you, you, in one way. You obviously uh, haven't learned how to control it. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> hey, I- if, if, if I if I reacted uh, in such a way that uh, it was negative to me, mm-hmm. uh you know, why would I call a show? The, the things that go on don't bother me because I choose not to let them to bother yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway. So how did you do with your uh, photo uh, thing, your photo club? I beat them so bad. These are a bunch uh, of... Let me explain to people. He goes to this photo club, and the photo club is populated by guys who are in their 80s, Okay. And he comes in with he comes in with photographs he took when he was a teenager, and then he uses them in competition, and uh, then he then he he's so happy because he beats the shit out of them. I'm living off my shark photos, which I did in March. Now, uh, what happened was is they moved me up. They took me out of basic, and they moved me up two two ranks to advanced. And last night's competition everybody that competed was in the advanced stage. That was the highest level it you could like have. It sounds like you all have some dread disease. Yes. You're, well, you're the, the highest it, level. You're in the you advanced have, stage of that disease. The highest level you could have for nature. Yeah. And not only did I come in number one, oh. I also got best of show. And Well, uh, so did the Dalmatian at the Kennel yeah. Club show here now, in New York. Well, for each of these competitions twice a month, we have a professional judge that comes in and uh, they blindly, uh, you know, uh, assess the, uh, the different photographs and then they judge them uh, as to which is number one, two, three, which is best of show. Mm-hmm. And I got number one, best of show. Mm-hmm. And that and competed against what? Some old guy with a picture of his niece's birthday no, party? Oh, no, no. There was some great stuff there. One guy spends thousands. He hires, he goes all over the world. Mm-hmm. He hires uh, uh, these uh, guides. I, they mm-hmm. take him to places to get some of the best shots in, in the world. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he can afford it, you know. And yeah. uh, I was up against all sorts of guys like that. Uh, in in nature, 
I was even up against my landlord for the store, <laughs> and he took third. Your landlord for the store is one of the people who does this with you? I would yes. Oh, shit. There he gets it. Oh, boy. He has. So well, you look at the guy with me. And my operations manager, uh, who, uh, who I was introduced to by the landlord about six or seven years ago, also participates, although he put his cat down yet, uh, uh, Wednesday. So he, after 14 years, he had to put the cat to sleep. I, I had the same thing. I had to put my cat down. And what I did, yeah. well, I, I just told him he wasn't as good as the dog. Yeah, well, you know, he was taking it pretty hard. And uh, you know, so... The, he went to the veterinary. He took the day off. He went to the veterinarian. Mm -hmm. uh, he brought the cat home and hung out with the cat. You for know, a few last hours night we were talking about Schrodinger's cat. Yes, yes, I uh, I heard. Uh, God, was that boring? But you know, no, it wasn't boring. I thought it was scintillating. Oh, so, you know, and so, nobody, uh, some, nobody some here, no, nobody was here uh, to hear about Schro Schrodinger's Schrodinger's cat. It sounded like what, what's that thing that they do uh, 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 where they where the guy builds some sort of contraption that you know this falls down that falls ba down. No, the basic of Schro uh, the Schrodinger cat experiment is that if you have a cat and you put him in a box with cyanide, uh, I forget what the three things were, but three things that yeah. will kill the cat. It was a, I think they said a radioactive uh, yeah, particle uh, isotope yeah. or something that, fall, yeah. you know, that has and, a half-life. And you put them all in the ba box with the cat, and yeah. you don't open the box. Now there's a possibility That's that cat is, a, is alive, or there's a possibility yeah, sure. that the cat is dead, but as long as you don't open the box, he's neither. No, the, are you telling me if a tree falls in the forest that doesn't make any noise? It's, is that is that is that your deal? It's that kind of deal, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think if the tree falls, it makes noise. You're just well, not anyway, there to hear we, it. You you were just upset because you tuned in this program and you heard that we were actually having an intelligent discussion because you weren't there. That was intelligent. Yeah, very. No, it sounded it, it sounded elitist to me. That's what it sounded like. Oh, wait a minute, I can participate in that. Give me a second. What? It's hard putting an animal down. Huh? Yeah, yeah, because the, my cat did not oh, like being God. compared to the dog. It yeah. was tough, I know. And you don't but get I, the I, joke? I, you don't get the joke? Yeah, I get the joke. What's with the pipe? That'll kill you, Phil. You well, that's cancer. because we're talking about elitist, uh, oh, intelligent stop. things. You know, I, I, if I had long it's sleeves smoke. on, maybe I'd have one of those leather patches on the bottom of my smoking jacket. You know? It's Mr. Howell. <laughs> Mr. Howell. <laughs> had everything for one day. You're going for three hours, guy. All right. What. Now it's your turn. You you guys talk. I had enough. Do they have a video in your class? Uh, they do have uh, projected, not video. They, uh, they either do. I do. I don't do much projected. I like to print, so uh, uh, I, I and I'm the print chair, so I have to be there to organize the prints, uh, put them up on the viewer, and uh, how many read people? The title. How many people are in this club? Uh, there's about a hundred and uh, hundred and eighty that belong, and maybe there's forty that participate. It's pretty good. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And. And then it goes from this club, it goes to N4C, uh, and this is an organization of 14 other clubs like this, and then you compete. Matter of fact, I got a second in N4C for my uh, another shark You know something? Shot. This is more boring than Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> nothing, nothing could be more boring than Schrodinger's cat. Put Phil in the box, see what happens. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this oh. one, oh, I called it the uh, uh, Shark Highway, and uh, it's just uh, a bunch of sharks that uh, uh, kept going around in a Phil, circle. Phil, how many, how many frames did you have to shoot to get that? Uh, I probably have a hundred good shots out of the thousand that I took. Well, I'm saying, but, you know, we see, here's the thing I found years ago what I did. Is I when I started shooting video, I found that I could freeze frame, and then I would uh, I would freeze frame it and turn it into a photograph, and everybody would go, 
great photograph. And I go, well, you know, I got a one out of every 30 per second chance of getting a decent photograph. Well, you know, when you're photographing something that's moving, like a shark, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't get the right perspective on it. And when, you're, and when you're photographing wildlife, you don't want the hand of man in it. So I needed to be able to crop uh, in such a way that oh, there was boy. Back to other Schroeder than the wild cat. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm getting drowsy now. Those are the rules. Right? Those are the rules. Right. Yeah. You know what the, the biggest, the number one rule in photo club is? Uh, showing up. <laughs> Never mention photo club. Uh, Take your pictures. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it's nice when you get someone that uh, is a professional that, uh, you know, analyzes your stuff and can give you hints as how do you how you can improve it. And, uh, you know, and it's nice you get to talk to people about the hobbies like. So it's probably a nice, it's a healthy thing, though. You think, you know, clubs. Yeah. yeah. The common and, until somebody brings a gun to it and shoots yeah. everybody. So let's dead. get Phil. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Little, only only because I keep winning. <laughs> Win once, though. I mean, you don't want to. Yeah. If he, if he, the, if he loses, he's taking that gun the next time. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going shooting Sunday. Are you really? Yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, um, a friend of mine is uh, does executive protection for uh, some of the executives at Larry Ellison's uh, thing, and he's going Boy, to Africa. Larry Ellison, what an asshole he is. Well, he's he's flying to Africa on Tuesday. Uh, uh, and Africa to gets to have an places. asshole over there. Yeah, well, uh, anyway, uh, where they, um, what, what, you, what do you call it, where they practice it's this uh, place about a mile and a half off the road uh, with nothing around. So we're going there. It's, it's fun. It's all set up with targets and these metal targets that you can shoot. I'll tell you, the best uh, target shooting that I've ever been involved in is years ago when they first started Burning Man. Yeah. Uh, they had a, because it's in the Black Rock Desert, which is the mm -hmm. largest... Um, piece of uh, flat land in the entire United States. Okay, yeah, I've never been there, but I've seen pictures. You can drive from one end of it to the other at night, turn off your headlights, and uh, just put the thing on auto, and just sit there and wait for 40 minutes before you're going to hit anything. Anyway, the There's point no is... There's no cactus, no rocks? Nothing, no nothing. Nothing. It's like the surface. No people of, sleeping in sleeping bags. Well, that we they did have, and some people got killed sleeping in the sleeping bags because a car rolled right over them. But anyway, this was in the early days of of uh, of um, uh, Burning Man. Burning Man. Uh, I think it was year three that they were up there, and they had a thing which was very famous, and they loved having it called the drive-by shooting range. And what you would do is you'd go out to this area, and they had all these stuffed animals and everything, and you then would, would drive by and shoot the gun, your gun out the uh, out the window and shoot at the uh, at the targets. What they have for a backdrop? The, the whole desert. But anyway, uh, uh, but they stopped it after about the th fourth year, I think, because they felt. I would it, think they, that's a good idea. Why? To stop that. I think it's a great idea. That was the best. I love the drive-by shooting range. Well, you you want to you want to be sure of your backstop. You want to berm. You don't want to take a chance that somebody's you know a half mile out there and gets. Phil, whacked. I just told you this is the largest amount of just empty land in the United States, and all over on one air in one area they had the drive-by hmm. shooting range where there was nobody within miles. Hmm. Well, don't sounds tell, like don't, fun. Yeah, yeah, I know. It sounds like fun to you. I'm Did not. you shoot? No, no. Somebody with me had a gun though, and they were shooting. So, yeah, yeah. But I, I thought that was fun. I thought the only thing missing in the drive-by shooting range were some politicians sitting there. But, yeah. You know, well, that's why I like shooting at metal because when you hit it, it makes a noise. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know and what? Uh, yeah, here's here's excitement. Uh, I finally think I've done it. Yeah. So, I finally have gotten. My ice maker in my refrigerator working. All right. Wow. Do you know? Uh, last uh, night, let me finish. Uh, I, last yeah. night, I uh, there was this thing uh, the inside it, you, you can adjust, 
and I adjusted it more to the plus side, and I did it too much. And water came spurting out of the place because too much water was going into the, into the tray, into the automatic ice tray. So I yeah. learned, I pulled it back so it stopped doing that. And now it makes nice big chunks of ice, something it hasn't done in the, in the uh, eight years or something that we've been here. I finally got the thing making decent ice. Thank you. That's wonderful. Then if but, anybody uh, has problems with their with their ice say, maker, give me a call. I'll come over. I'll I'll fix it for you. Do you know uh, that uh, about half of my business comes from insurance companies? Mm -hmm. And at one point, I thought that I'd get personalized plates that said "ice maker," and the reason being is that they were keeping me in business. Mm -hmm. Ice makers fail. Uh, quite a quite a bit. Well, uh, uh, ice makers in refrigerators are probably the number one thing that goes wrong. Right. Yeah. And and leak. I completely oh, have, I completely the reflect the replace the ice maker. That's one of the things I did. And then I pretty do well you, hacked do the you thing have, up. To kind of uh, renters insurance. No. Well, yes, we I do. Did. We do. Yeah. Oh, good. Because if the thing leaks and destroys the floor and the guy downstairs uh, his ceiling. And maybe floor. Uh, you want to make won't sure happen, uh, you're, happen. you're I'm covered. Not, I'm not leaking. I'm, no. I'm, I, everything I is perfect. It is making <laughs> these beautiful. I kind of look like uh, look. At, I put I put down some aluminum foil in the in the bucket that it goes mm -hmm. into, so I can see how much it's making, and it's doing about five cubes a pass. So, and that's what it should be doing. And they're nice, big, thick cubes. Uh, and it's kind of it's kind of like I'm looking at transparent cat turds. Well, now that I'm in an apartment, there's no ice maker in this uh, refrigerator. You have to use trays, mm -hmm. and I really miss that because in my last house, I had a great ice maker, and I agreed to leave the refrigerator there. I had a Gen Air; it was gorgeous, and uh, French doors, the whole thing. And uh, so the guy who bought the house says, "I want their refrigerator." I said, "Yeah, okay." Uh, but here, no ice maker, and ice makers are really a nice thing. Well, g girlfriend doesn't like them. She makes really? her own with ice trays and then has a bucket of ice. I don't know why, because now the way this is making ice, the ice it's making is the same shape as the ice she's making in the trays and with the same mm. consistency. First time in the eight years I've had that uh, refrigerator that I've been able to get it to make decent ice. Yeah. And it was by pure accident last night that I, that I, I overloaded it and too much to water them. came spilling out. You know, and I learned that if I adjust that, I'll get decent-sized cubes. So now I'm just wow. sitting here. Pretty soon? Mm -hmm. Pretty soon you'll be putting in light bulbs. Well, no, I yeah. listen. I replace the whole the whole thing that makes well, the yeah. ice. The yeah, I heard you. Maker. I heard. I listened to yeah. your uh, thing. You said you, you you had some sort of special uh, Allen key yeah. that uh, you took it's the screws out. It's not an Allen key. It was a uh, it was a nut uh, a nut uh, turner a quarter inch nut yeah. uh, uh, driver. Or, well, it could have been a ball And that's buster. all I needed. That's all I needed, that, and I needed a, a Phillips, which I have, to adjust this thing, which I didn't know really adjust how much water goes into this thing. And I opened it up too much, and then it started spilling off into the rest of the freezer, and I had to clean it up fast before it all froze the whole thing, you know. But anyway, yeah. so I, I now I, I it's out there right now making ice. So... Now, now you have a, another you see, this profession. Is, this is what Jews become proud of when they accomplish them. I remember once my father years ago installed a new toilet. I don't know how he did it, but he installed a new toilet. And for weeks he was w inviting friends over to see the toilet he had installed. Yeah, look at the flush. <laughs> you know, but I mean, he, he literally installed the damn thing, you know. So I'm very proud that I, aren't you amazed that I installed an ice maker and I've got my refrigerator making ice again? You know, isn't it a wonderful thing, uh, the internet, where you can uh, look up how to do stuff, yeah, I do that how to buy stuff? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's how you know. I knew. The only thing is I hacked it up a little bit, the chute where the water comes down, because I was picking at it with a knife to kind of clear out there. Ice was getting stuck in there 
and I got that all cleared out. I, I did it. I uh, listen. I if you want, uh, I have a new profession now. Right. Uh, listen, uh, twenty five bucks. I'll come over and install your uh, your uh, uh, your uh, ice maker. The yeah. Ice Man cometh. Yeah, that's. Oh, right. I just wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. does the Ice Man cometh? Yeah. Well, uh, if I'm watching porn, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> Phil doesn't, but uh, that's another story altogether. Where is everybody tonight? I guess Phil's back, so nobody wants to join the uh, the the uh, the show. Of course. You know, and I don't want to sit here and argue with him for the next hour. I'm just too out of it for that. You know. But uh, yeah, once we buy Greenland, everything will be fine. Do you really want Greenland? Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's pretty cool. He's crazy. He's nuts. Has he done anything? Today? He's he's, 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 he's going. He's losing it. He's losing it. Do you think you know, he's doing this on purpose so that not to win the election, or he's just stupid? I no. I think I I think he is getting frustrated that. His poll numbers have not, he is the first president in the history of poll taking that uh, hasn't gone at some point in his term over 50%. What about with Republicans? But, but that doesn't matter. They don't. Of course, make, the, those are the ones that are going to vote for. They him. don't make up the majority of the voters out there. Yeah, but the Democrats don't vote. Huh? They don't turn out. The Demo uh, yes, but the independents do, many of them. And uh, the, uh, the independents are the ones you want to get as well. Uh, well we're being joined by Josh Wheeler, so we can have... Uh, 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 our, we can talk about dead cats. We can talk about Schrodinger's uh, uh, cat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see here. Let me, uh, let me do that. There we go. There's, uh, uh, there's our, uh, our panel of four now. Um, uh, but no, uh, he, uh, um, he is, uh, he's got a, he's not doing well. Uh, and I, from what they say inside the white house, the stuff that leaks out is that he's, he's really going nuts. He's, 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 he may be certifiable. And last night I said something I probably drove you crazy when you heard me say it, Phil, I said that I felt that, uh, he should be put on trial in the Hague for crimes against humanity. I think. Um, can can you spell moron? I mean, you know, he hasn't done anything uh, wrong, and uh, oh, Phil, all he's uh, done let, uh, is uh, support I, the I, United I, States. Where's the, and, uh, and where's, consider us where's first. A, where's a razor blade so I can slice my fucking Ooh. wrists? <laughs> <laughs> Phil. Oh. They just, just, to. just based on the oh. whole, on what went uh, down with the uh, with the uh, people, the kids, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, Mexican so, kids or the kids and yeah, you know, well, when your that, parents that, break that uh, will you let me finish, Phil? Will you fucking you let me finish? Yell. Will it's you let me fucking positive. finish, Phil? Uh, yeah, as, as long as you stop yelling, I don't like this. Huh? I don't like that. No, but I mean, I I, I'm I, sick I and tired of it, Phil, that when I start saying something, you just interrupt. I'm answering you. That's not answering me. That's not letting me talk. It's not being respectful of my place on this show. Okay. Okay. If that's the way you feel. All I'm saying is that uh, the, he should be on trial at The Hague for uh, crimes against humanity, for the way these kids were, were treated and handled and how their lives are going to be uh, irreparably injured by the actions that have been taken against them. Can uh, I answer that? No. Okay. <laughs> but Josh can. Josh? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to go that far, but uh, I see your point, I guess. I mean, I do think what ha what has happened at the border is so far removed from traditional American values and, and just traditional, you know, president of what's being done that it's 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 out of bounds for me but we have to everyone can make that decision i mean phil can say you know i don't think it's out of bounds i think it's perfectly you know within the lines of what we should be doing and i i think 
You know, but that's a matter of legislation, so that's a personal decision because all people believe in different, you know, forms of punishment, different laws, different, you know, ways that we should do things. So I, I take their point, you know, even though I don't agree with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, I, I, I just think that, uh, and I wonder where those inter the international court is where all this is happening, you know? They're, Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Why, why is that funny? Yes. Uh, you know, because, look, if, if, uh, if Tony had a child and he broke the law and he was arrested, uh, would his child go to the same cell as Tony? No. It would be separated. It would be a ward of the state unless there was another uh, adult that was, uh, you know, related or could take custody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so this is what happens. If, if uh, Patrick uh, decides to roll over to somebody's house and break in and he gets arrested, uh, what happens to his child? His child gets taken away, and that's all that's happened to the people at the border. And no different than what would have happened to any American that broke the law and was arrested. Okay. I still agree with Josh. You know, it's not what we are as Americans. It's not what we believe ourselves to be as Americans. And it is not a positive behavior as Americans to do what we're doing, okay? And you still think that the dead cat in the box is alive because you didn't see it, <laughs> you know? I'm sorry, well, well, I'm sorry if, if intellectual discussion bothers you, Phil. That wasn't intellectual. It was if elitist. No, it wasn't elitist well, I was just, at all. What, I was what? just going to say that... Did you put on airs, too? I mean, the, the point that, you know, if a person is arrested for a crime you know, that they don't allow their children to, you know, basically reside with them in jail while they're in holding, awaiting trial or whatever. Um, I mean, that that's perfectly true. I mean, uh, an un unarguable point, but there is quite a difference between, you know, I've been arrested for, you know, money laundering and I'm being held awaiting trial without bail and I can't have my kids in the cell with me. As opposed to, I've showed up at the U.S. borders, you know, asking to enter the country legally for that's asylum, not, and here is my wife, and here are my two kids. That's not and what they, they say. Asked. Welcome to. Yes, that is what's happening. No, I'm they sorry. Came I mean, at, <laughs> at non-traditional crossings, uh, they try to sneak into the country. They didn't mm -hmm. come to a okay. border crossing Patrick has and his declare hand up. that their need for amnesty. At that point, they would not have been separated. Patrick has his hand up. Uh, the the separation, I look at it this way. It, it's, Bill is right with, if, if one of us were to get arrested, our kid would be taken from us. Now, the difference is... Not, not come, in all cases, Patrick, by the way. Not in all cases, no. You're interrupting Patrick, big Al. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, we would get our kid taken away. But because we are legal residents here, we more than likely have family to take possession of that child. Mm -hmm. When you're here you know, fucking legally and you don't have other fucking family that you know, what do you do with the kid? You have to put them somewhere. So you know, you, you, you can't put them in the cell. Mm -hmm. so you can't. Now, I will say this. The one part that has irritated the shit out of me with Trump and that whole situation, it there seemed to be a fuck-up on how to keep who belongs to who straight. That should have been rectified. It probably separating them too fucking bad. You break the law, whether you're a legal resident or illegal, you're going to get separated. But legal or illegal, there should be documentation on who belongs to who. So, you know, once, once you're going to get uh, sent back to Mexico or, or Venezuela or wherever you're coming from, mm -hmm. you can get back. You know, I found that 
uh, Patrick, that I don't have you up here. Hold on a second. Let me get you on screen. I don't know why that happened. I thought I was going to say that. Yeah, this is one of, as I say, tonight technically, I'm, uh, I basically, I'm channeling um, uh, Jack Bishop now um, when it comes to uh, technology. Tonight, so. Alice, it didn't matter. It was still okay, the show. You could still, you know, audio was in. Yeah, was I just want, I like Patrick to be seen because Patrick is uh, such a cute vis visage. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it, he, he should be seen. Uh, I think where you're wrong, Patrick, on this is that, to begin with, this isn't a traditional criminal situation, okay? In fact, these are people who basically, because they're not citizens of the United States, have no rights. But what we do as Americans is we try to treat them with respect, and, and we're not. Humane. Yes. And humanely. Yeah, yes, Jeff. Well, I have two things I'd like to say. Yeah. The, the first thing is a, a number of these are two years old, maybe three years old. They can't even tell you what their name is and what their, you know what their parents' names are? Mommy and Daddy. I mean, you know, and it, you yeah. can add the Spanish translation. Yeah. But that's it. So that's one thing. The other thing is, I think with Hit, with uh, Trump wanting to really become uh, kind of a, a Nazi, we, we should start tattooing all of these kids. I think. Don't you think that would be good for you, Pat? Yeah, well, put you know, a number on their arm, right? Yeah, put put get them yep. one of those sleeves, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Tony. Or a tribal, tribal tattoo. You know, you know what doesn't yeah. make any sense. I'm oh, sorry. That would you know make what doesn't make any oh, sorry. He, and he ought to get like number one. Do you know? <laughs> number one. Right. Yeah. Well, what I don't get is that would make him feel good. When the kids are coming over, what the United? Why are we even separating them? Because now they don't know technically who their parents are. That's so awesome. what kind of life are they going to have anyway? They're not separating the, them now. Now they're uh, they keeping keep, them together. Would common sense be to keep everybody together from the get go? Uh, yes and no, but the, that was the law, and uh, you know the parents made a decision to break the law. And, okay, so say the parents can. And, and, they and had that's the consequence. Heart. If you make a decision to knock over a liquor store and you got a two-year-old kid in the Phil, car, Phil, but Phil, guess what? Phil, You're going Phil, to jail and the kid's Phil, going into Phil, the Phil, social Phil, service. Phil, Phil, Let's Phil, say they're Phil, coming in the world together. Wouldn't you keep them together if you know the parents are right Phil, there? Phil, there. First, okay, I don't even know that for, those first, are the parents. First of all, Phil, uh, not everybody who commits a crime gets their kids taken away from them. You know. If the kid uh, okay, is sitting in the car... I'm not everybody is has that kind of situation. Secondly, uh, forget about, oh, hey, they're doing something illegal because this is kind of a different situation. This is more no, an Will you let me fucking finish? Jesus. Only it, I give oh. up. I give up. Just you talk. Well, you, you say stuff that is, is so full of shit. You know how could how could you not answer it when when you when you say such dribble? Okay, you want to say dribble? Enjoy yourself. It's dribble, not dribble. Oh, so. uh, it's, it's same thing. Barrel. It's, no, it's, it's got more saliva. Barrel. The thing is, though, let somebody finish their point. Even yeah, if you know, because you don't let them finish, Phil. I mean, it it doesn't matter if you yeah. agree or disagree. You let them finish it, and then. Retort from there, you know. I mean that that uh, that's right. way. I mean it's just the way it is, Phil. And and the thing that I, you know, and I've said this in the past about some of the stuff that's been brought up, and then you or I'll try to refute something. The way that we can refute it is with documentation that the liberals read, rag that they read versus. Something like you know, you're going to go to Breitbart. They're never going to. They're never going to buy it. But so to, what liberals, what liberals read, is is always so slanted. Yeah, you but know. What do you think the shit we read is? <laughs> what do you think when I watch Fox News and I watch the chick, and I don't listen to them most of the time, but when they do talk, it's slanted. 
Yeah. And I mean that. It's, so you can't fault one side or the other. I mean, we're all full of shit that way. We all believe what we believe, and we're gonna we're gonna gravitate towards what we want to believe or what we, you know, what more in our wheelhouse. So, so if Alec got something to say. Let him finish it, right. and then you can tell him he's full of shit. Just all right. Yeah, I second that one. Can you let him well, finish, Bill? Please? Yeah, Jeff. Uh, when uh, somebody quotes something that's either on Fox News or Breitbart or one of those things, do you immediately discount it as uh, as BS or uh, the the way uh, I discount CNN or uh, you know? I, I occasionally look at at both. Uh, I gotta tell you today. I say not today, on Tuesday, but I'm talking about in the, in the last six months or whatever, the the stuff that's on TV, it doesn't matter which show, it's it, it's crap. It's just, I just don't want to hear from MSNBC the same crap every day. So I, I just stopped listening to it. Yeah. But but if you heard something on a uh, that was quoted from a right wing site, would, <clears throat> would you immediately discount it? Uh, or no. or do you no? No. I don't think so. you know? Yeah. Uh, have uh, has Alex stopped pouting yet? No. Yeah. yeah. Put these on. Him on. Huh? You're just making it worse. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if he's listening. But uh, hey, Josh, what about you? When you uh, uh, hear something from a right-wing website uh, or or a news uh, uh, show, do, you know, how do you feel about it? Do you filter it yourself, or uh, do you d totally discount it? I don't discount it. I wouldn't say I filter it. I would say I judge it. I mean, I listen to whatever is available and then i judge it based on you know the what i perceive to be the facts i guess i mean everyone has their own perception of everything i mean you can get into a you know there are uh there are entire college courses dedicated to you know what is truth you know what is fact you know so i mean where they go over it for weeks but i mean i think that's one of the biggest things that you can take out of if you get some type of academic uh, degree, you know, in a like a field of study, you know, like in the historical field, for example, if you don't agree with someone, obviously, this is not a news to anyone. You can't just say, I don't agree with that. You know, you have to say, why? Why? Mm -hmm. You know, where's your where's your why? I mean, you have to, you know, you have to have something. I mean, there are people in the historical field just like all others that I, as soon as I hear their name, you know, I roll my eyes. It's like, oh, God, I'm not interested in anything that that dumb fucker could possibly have to say. But that's me. But if I were going to do that in a classroom, I can't say that. I got to put a face on it and say why. So, no, I mean, do I sit around and watch the Fox News channel? No. I don't really sit around and watch any of them all the time. I mean, you know, I mean, Fox to me is a mouthpiece. You know, I mean, I, I think that's what it is. I don't even think they would deny it, you know, to be honest with you, if you asked them. Uh, and I have some problem with that. But in other ways, it's, you know, in America, you can kind of do that if you want. But but I'm not one of those people either that, you know, I don't read the liberal media, you know, because I'm not a liberal. You know, I mean, I don't subscribe to fucking The Nation magazine and read an article in it. And then, oh, my God, I'm going to be on fire about what I just read for the next six weeks or whatever, you know, on some fucking crusade. I mean, I just take information in every day and put out what I think's best based on my experiences in life and what I've learned. So back to Alex's uh, thing where he said that Trump should be tried by the Hague. Did Trump break any laws when he separated, uh, uh, U.S. laws, when he separated uh, children from their parents uh, when they uh, came into this country uh, undocumented. I really so, don't know the answer to that. Y you know, know but if thing, yeah. they, they say that, you know, all the other presidents before him have never used that. 
they never used it, and he's the one that started using it. Well, yeah. yeah. Look, look at what a mess it made. We didn't have as many coming across the border from all over South America. Yeah, but this is a big problem. The the people that are coming now. We've never had people from from this country coming with this problem. They're killing the people over there, the drug cartels. But they've been killing, killing the, the drug cartels. The but They're Charlene, do you remember? Do you remember the drug cartels lining up bodies on the border uh, uh, when Obama was president? There was hundreds decapitated heads and all sorts of things. The drug cartel I, I, was trying to intimidate. Because no, you're ridiculous. You know, no, I no, no, no hey, Patrick. Uh, yeah, no. I, I, I got something that's a change of subject for you, Phil, because you're such a cop. Like that. What do you feel about the guy in Staten Island now? This is going to be a precedent-setting thing. He's going to uh, sue to get his job back. The, Which the, guy uh, is that? Yeah, the, the, the guy that they choked to death in Staten Island. He got fired in precedent setting. Now he's going to try to get his job Oh, it, it, was that the guy selling cigarettes? Uh, in, uh, yeah, he was a heavy set fellow, and he wasn't that healthy anyway. And he got strangled. And they said he can't, you know, they don't like the chokehold anymore. And they fired the guy, which was precedent set, you know, setting. Is five years right? after they killed the guy. And now the guy's going to try to get his job back. That's like a precedent setting well, thing, you know, this whole case. But they said that he had no wrongdoing. How do you feel about it? Well, uh, if you're not supposed to use the chokehold and he used the chokehold, then. Uh, yeah, but he... I think, Phil, I think that came after he did the chokehold and killed the guy. Well, now they're really into what do you, What do you think hold. about that? Me? Yeah. Well, don't. I know a guy that they use that, you know, I'm really into art and stuff, and I was in the 80s, you know. There was a guy, Jean-Michel Basquiat. There's a whole documentary. He was afraid they were going to chokehold him, Jean-Michel Basquiat. But there was a guy named Michael Stewart who they chokeholded. There's a whole list of people that have been killed by the cops in New York City. And uh, Michael Stewart was one of them. And I didn't know him very well. He liked a girl that I knew. And I, I know he was a 98-pound, very frail guy. And they he tagged a subway car. And they killed him. They strangled him with the billy club. It's funny you mentioned that. The The month I got hired at Richmond, uh, there was a guy that was, uh, they used the carotid artery uh, ch uh, choke in the jail. They choked him, but they actually crushed his larynx. And he uh, aspirated on his own uh, vomit and died in the, in the cell. They put him in the cell. He was on the floor of the cell. I think he was drunk. Uh, re resisting and, and uh, that have to do with anything? That's, well, that's uh, 60 anything. minutes came and uh, uh, you know, it just so happens. And that's when uh, Richmond outlawed the carotid artery chokehold. And so my whole career, which was 20 years, uh, we didn't do that, uh, you know, and uh, because it, it, you weren't allowed to, you had to use other forms. Court. Right, you had it's to use other forms, force, yeah. other forms of force or compl a compliance to get the guy to do what you want, and uh, and the chokehold like, was like like putting these children in cages and things like that. This is excessively doing things to these poor people that are coming here for. I mean, I I don't know. There's got to be a better solution than separating these children from their parents and stuff, and and it's just a it's a mess. What what happened because he enforced I, I can't that see. law. Uh, Ray, Ray Renati did something on, no, nah, I still can't, can't see it. And, and my thing is, why did he start with this immigration Trump? Was it, was it that bad? Like, um, Josh, you're good. You know, more eloquent than I am. Do we need to have this, uh, stuff anyway, this big immigration push that Trump started? You know, like, was this necessary? All this Mexicans are rapists and murderers and all this. I mean, was that all necessary, or did Trump go crazy? You know. Well, he he talks too divisive, though. He doesn't know how to really. I mean, I know he doesn't know how to talk. That's one of his big problems. But he I mean, we got another president. <laughs> Would somebody have been doing this stuff with immigration? You know, like did, was this really necessary to really crack down like this? I mean, you know, couldn't we have found a better way? to, you know, do something with immigration or was it necessary to go nuts like this? It's almost like we're like, you know, no Mexicans need come in. Like, I'm Irish 
and I, you know, my family is always talking about that. They used to have signs, no Irish allowed and no Irish need apply. And, you know, back in the old days, you know, they had to be servants to rich people and wash their clothes and cook their food and nanny their children and stuff like that. But I mean, now we don't even want the Mexicans in the country. You know what I mean? Sorry, They've said sorry. that. They said that about all, uh, uh, I know, every, every right. you know, the any Jews, the Irish, right. the Italians, the Polish, you know, well, not every, the Polish, every, I never heard that, but yeah, uh, it didn't matter. You know, each successive, uh, group of immigrants, uh, met resistance from the ones that were already there. Is that right? No. Well, I, I already, they didn't let him build a hotel in Cancun or something or, Something Ooh. like that, and that's he's no. kind of hard on for Mexico now. Like uh, the same thing with this woman in uh, what country is that? Or, the, you know that country that he, the recent country. He's mad at the woman. She's nasty. That one. Oh, Denmark. Yeah, he's mad at them probably for something like that too, right? Well, now Denmark has sold the uh, what was uh, it's now the U.S. Virgin Islands. They sold that to the United States. So if they're willing to sell the U.S. Virgin Islands and they're losing seven hundred million dollars a year, huh? Somebody, I don't know, because you know how Phil is. Is he right about that? Somebody, or because I don't know what he's uh, talking about there. Am I right about the U.S. Virgin Islands that yeah. originally uh, belonged to Denmark to and were sold to the to uh, the United States? Is what Charlene's asking. Is he right about that? Well, I'm not sure. But Phil, are you trying to say that about? Oh, well, but. I think the problem with Trump, for don't you have a little bit of a problem with the way he does it, that he's divisive, how he talks, though? Like, he doesn't really, like, he never admits he's wrong about anything. It's yeah. like if he, if somebody disagrees with him, then he tries to label him because that's the only way he gets discredited. Tony, Tony, what did he say now that he's uh, the chosen one? He's the chosen one. That I didn't, I didn't, one, is right? that true? I don't even know. I mean, against I, China. He's the chosen one. Second coming. You know, it didn't. It, does it really matter what people say? I know that some people now say that words have uh, effects, and he's the president of the United States, and that he should be careful of his words. But he's also the first president or the first Repu Republican, really, that is fighting back when he's attacked. Romney, he's they attacked Ill. him. Hmm? Who's mentally ill? He's not well, fighting back. When, when they bad. attacked, he's they attacked Romney. Uh, who's the, who's the one that just died? He was a senator, uh, McCain. Uh, they attacked him uh, uh, while he was don't alive. Start with the McCain thing, please. Well, I, I don't want to hear these that. guys he didn't fight McCain back when he was dead. He's a hero. Right. Leave him alone. Please. But you don't you don't realize when when the left attacked uh, McCain and Romney when he was when they were running for president, they didn't. Uh, uh, fight back because they felt it was beneath them. Uh, Trump is the first one that actually pushes back when he's pushed. And the left isn't accustomed to that. No, he just pushes any old way. And not when anybody even says anything. He's just ridiculous. He's insane. Well, yeah, look what he did to poor McCain. You brought McCain up. That was ridiculous. That he was thing. still making bad McCain, on McCain while he was dead. McCain ran for president. I didn't bring it up in relation to Trump. I brought it up in relation to how the left attacked McCain, attacked Romney, and they didn't do anything to uh, to fight back, uh, you know, or to, uh, uh, you know, well, push back. I don't want to. Can I say something? I don't want to sound a sexist for saying this. But in my personal opinion, it has, it, it has, it has to do with McCain. And I, I could be wrong. And I would love to see a woman president or a vice president, but I think McCain picking Palin, who's a complete idiot, it sounds like, cost him the election. Let's be honest, Phil. If he didn't pick Palin, if he would have picked like Condoleezza Rice, he might have won. She was she. Come on, she she was an ad. She was she literally was idiot, basically yeah. he threw the election. It looks like. I mean, I you Ooh, know McCain. McCain is a, yeah, by picking her, that's throwing the election. Just like Biden, if he wanted to run, he should have ran four years ago, I thought. I think he got bad advice on uh, Palin. It was almost like they didn't want to win that year. That's what it looked like. How, how can they sit in the room and say she's a good idea? He's a war hero. She's a pinup. 
Come you on, know, Jesus, there's no other strong women they could have picked. I, I find I, that I. I look at the way not only Romney gave up and McCain gave up in the last several weeks of the. I don't think McCain wanted it at that at that yeah, point. Well, That's why no. What up. what happened? He should have picked uh, Lieberman. But uh, what what happens is, uh, you ever see top athletes? The the difference between gold and silver could be a thousandth of a second, and you just have to push to if you're gonna if you're gonna win the gold, and. I think McCain and uh, uh, Romney ran out of steam, uh, and and they couldn't they couldn't push through, and they gave up. Uh, maybe they saw that they were losing anyway. Hey, here's and, a question I posed to you, Phil. This election I think is going to be very interesting. You ready? Now I'm not saying Russia swung the election. Now Trump, Alex is right. This guy has a good economy supposedly on him. We don't know how good it is yet. Because, you know, everything goes up and down a little bit. But whatever. Now, if Trump loses in a trounce, it may look like he's the, that the other election, if he can't win against, say, a weak Biden, say, then he could really say that might leave thought if he gets trounced that maybe Russia really did have a lot to do in the election because he should really win going away if, he's, if everything is as great as he says, that he's not hated in the polls. Is he going to cry foul, or did Russia really have something to say? We just don't know about it because we can't prove it to a certain degree. You know, the news media can create a uh, a, a dialogue. Uh, they, first, now they're talking that there's going to be a recession. So if you yeah, if are. you yeah if you keep uh, making this statement that there's going to be a recession, that we we have all of these indicators. Uh, they, well, sometimes it's a self fulfilling prophecy. Every Republican president, we get a recession. That's what I've heard. Every time we get a Republican, we get a recession. Well, that's probably true. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, true. it's aren't they cyclical? You know, it's just that, uh, you know, every so many years you get yeah, a recession. It sucks. I remember that. I lived through that last recession, and it wasn't fun. It wasn't. Well, that was it a was. bad recession. But Bush, yeah. it was terrible. After the Let's recession. ask Alex. I'm ready for him to come back. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Where is he? Hey, Josh. Hi, Alex. I, I, I got I got my aide here to make up. sure you can get a word in. Hmm? Maybe if Phil apologized, I don't know. Maybe. Oh. I don't think that's going to work either. Well, if if you'd like an apology, I'm happy to apologize. Unlike Trump, uh, I, I won't interrupt you. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to work. You might be mad. No, nah, I don't think he's mad. I think he's tired. I mean, sick and tired. Oh. This may be the last uh, ramble tonight, folks. Uh, no, we don't want that. Let me... Nobody wants that. Well, well you know... Uh, 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 you know, I, I wasn't uh, talking for the, about the last 20 minutes, half hour, I don't know what. And uh, uh, we got amazing numbers here of people listening. Don't get your ego up, Phil. Actually, they went no, down. Well, they maybe, went, they maybe. went down. They went down to the lowest they've been in months. Yeah. Oh, Phil got the bubble got popped. All right. Well, you know, uh, I thought maybe they liked uh, when okay. Alex was mad, and he had more people listening. But uh, no, I'm I'm sick of fighting it. You know, I really am. I'm sick of fighting it. You know, I try to get a point across. I can't get a point across on my own program. You know. All right. And look, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Uh, I can make things better. I'll I'll just go watch television and. Oh, now you you're, you're now you're going to play that you're hurt. No, 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 no. I I'm I am not pissed. No, just continue with the I, Phil. I just, uh, just I don't continue want to continue with the Phil Meyer show. I'm enjoying not doing anything. <laughs> Okay, but I I don't want it to detract, you know. Why don't Why don't Patrick uh, take it over for a little while? This isn't my show. It's Alex's show. And the thing is, Phil, like I said twenty minutes ago or so, just let people finish their points. I mean, you 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 don't need to come back with a retort for them. I mean, even if even if you think it's ridiculous. I mean, half the time I sit here and I want to say shit and interrupt people, but I don't because it's funnier when you let somebody that you disagree with and they sound totally ridiculous 
you let them finish. It's the same as what they do for us. I'm sure there's shit that I say that most of the people here or that are listening think, what a fucking moron. But they at least get to laugh once I finish my point. So, I mean, at least extend that courtesy to everybody to finish their point. And no. then once, it, once they're done, you know, then you can come back and say you're full of shit or, you know, here where you're wrong or I agree with you. Because you might be surprised sometimes. They, I mean, I have with conversations where I think it's going one way and it turns out I agree with somebody. You know, you just got to let people finish. So this is Alex's show. So I'm, I'm done off of my soapbox. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, the you know the 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 whole problem here is is that there is uh, at least on Phil's part no sadness for children whose lives probably have been inalterably changed and and upended, and this is a pain and a suffering that they're not going to soon forget, and they're the innocent people in all of this. I just, there's a show on um, AMC called The Terror. It's really a horror show, but this year they've chosen to have it take place in a Japanese det- in t- uh, d- uh, detention camp, uh, and, and the uh, Japanese being detained. Uh, this was the last time we did something that was shameful, uh, and uh, this is not un. Uh, that, that much different than that. The only difference being, well, the same thing in both cases. Uh, neither group of people committed any kind of crime uh, that, you, you know, you talk about, oh, well, if somebody commits a felony, right, they're going to get their kids taken away from them. How about if they commit a, 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 a what do you call it? Not a felony, but a, a misdemeanor. misdemeanor. Misdemeanor, you get a citation, and you can be uh, let go on your own recognizance. Well, are, they, are these people being charged with a felony? I don't know. No, they're being charged with a misdemeanor. No. Yes, they are. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. And this is something that's going to affect those children for the rest of their lives. It, it's something that is so traumatic, especially to one, two, three, four-year-olds. Uh, that I don't think they will ever in their lifetime forget it. And I don't think it's something that we as Americans can feel very proud about because this isn't what we believe ourselves to be. Can I say something? Uh, Go right ahead. It's your show. (laughs) Uh, When the Japanese Japanese were interned... Ray had his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. He's in a little circle. I just wanted to say, I, I'm certain Alex is right. It is a misdemeanor if they tried to sneak through. It's a misdemeanor. It's absolutely not a felony. That I know. And secondly, we're breaking asylum laws all over the place. Our own asylum laws. And I'm not saying Obama didn't either. I'm just saying we are doing that more so now than we ever have. So we are breaking the law. We are breaking the laws. And if you want to blame Trump or somebody else, it's fine. I'm just stating a fact here. I'm not making a judgment. So I just want you I just wanted to get that down. It's a so, misdemeanor. If it's a fel- if it's a crime, it's a misdemeanor. It's not a felony. If somebody wants asylum, uh, is the law that they have to go through a port of entry? Uh, no. I, I don't know. I don't know that, but you No, they can come in. Away. They can come in any way. It's a misdemeanor though. This yeah. is immigration it, law. It, right? it, it is it, 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 it if they um, don't come in through a normal port of entry, uh, it, uh, it, it they're still asking for asylum. They got here for asylum. That was their purpose. Maybe they had to cross a river to do it, but they're asking for asylum. It, it, that doesn't it doesn't change the asylum uh, part of this. Oh, well, you didn't come in the right entrance. Go down there, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll listen to your claims of asylum. Uh uh-uh. uh. Did did that change? Because in Florida, uh, they used to be if a Cuban made it to the shore. They were granted asylum. Mm-hmm. Well, that was refugee so, status. Did, did, they, right? did, yeah. did they change that? That was refugee they changed status. The refugee status. They did. Mm-hmm. 
so that's no longer uh, the way it is. No. Uh, that if no if they make it to no. to the beach, All right. uh, I I don't know whether it's a misdemeanor or or a felony. I can't imagine that they would hold these people and separate their families over a misdemeanor, uh, which is something that you can cite and release. Uh, you, know, you wouldn't think so. Book. You wouldn't think so, but you also wouldn't think that we'd be separating families. And when we separated those families, we didn't do the proper paperwork to figure out which kid belonged to which person. I mean, we've made a lot of mistakes here, Phil, because this is a very sloppy administration. On another quick point for something you said, um, yeah, I really want to see this president uh, 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 by Greenland. It's really a great idea. You know, uh, huh? That's crazy if you yeah. think about it. Look at what look at what he did with his casinos in vague in uh, Atlantic City. Look at all his bankruptcies. You want him to buy Greenland? Yes, obviously. Den uh, was a Denmark is losing money on the proposition, and he ain't going to do better because he isn't the businessman who could turn it into a profit making situation. Do I want to see him take over Greenland? If I were somebody in Greenland, I wouldn't want him to take it over because <laughs> I'd be under his thumb. Well, uh, the um, but they uh, he says that it's strategically uh, advantageous for the no, uh, United States. No, it's not. It never has well, been. In fact, Harry Truman tried to do it, and then he considered it a bad idea. He's probably got the uh, risk bought out. You know, you know, Greenland and risk. You can put your. He's. Probably, I think he's really stupid, Trump. I really do. I think he's just juvenile. Trump. No, offered, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said yesterday <laughs> that he was the chosen one. I mean, who says these things? What who said says things like that is a man who's delusional. Uh, That's a delusional statement. If I told you, if I came on here uh, this evening and said, you know, a voice spoke to me and said, I'm the chosen one, you'd all think I was going fucking nuts. Right. He's batshit crazy. But I am the chosen one. Come on, Phil. He's baby Jesus next. It's crazy. It's insanity talk. He's the kid whose mother always said, oh, you're great at everything. No, you're not. You're not great at everything, Donald. Your father's well, rich, actually, and you have actually, 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 quite the opposite. His father told me he wasn't good for anything. Oh, he did say that? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's him, they sent him off to a military academy to get rid of him. So he wouldn't be around the house. He liked the younger, the, the other boy. Uh, oh, that's that, the one who killed yeah, himself. The one that killed himself probably would have taken over the family business. Oh, so he's got, he's got parent issues then. Um yeah, uh, well, he, he, of course, he's got all he's got all kinds of issues, but most he's of all, well, at least his mother's not up in the attic. Yeah. At least <laughs> his mother's not up in the attic and yeah. spraying down with know. alcohol every day. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Ah! My mother hates his guts. She wants him to die in office, Alex. I swear to God. I uh, well, She's I don't. I don't. Uh, get, tell your mother that I, you know, I share her sentiment, but then we get pens. Go. You know, and, oh God! And, imagine and, that. And that, <laughs> that we don't. I, she, she makes me turn the news. I, she says I can't watch this man anymore. He's disgusting. She won't. That's just part of the family. Uh, you know the family. Phil's got Religious his hand cult. Up. Uh, I'm I'm reading here, and it says for the first entry or improper entry, they can be fined. Uh, as a criminal penalty and imprisoned for up to six months or both. So if it's under a year, that's a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. But it says for subsequent offense, the person could be fined or imprisoned for up to two years or both. So that's a felony. Yeah. Uh, be, if it's over a year. Uh, misdemeanor, first offense. You just said it. Yeah. You think okay. these people have been here two, three times? Come on. Yeah. Uh, some of them. No. No. Most of them. Give me a break. This is the first time. Uh, they can't come all the once. So come people on. remove. For a conviction of three or more misdemeanors involving drug crimes, uh, uh, or both, or a felony other than an aggravated felony, shall be fined or imprisoned Phil, up to ten most years. Most of them have committed a misdemeanor. Okay, get used to uh, it. And initially, so if they create, you know, so they should get you a ticket. You don't have Phil. You're trying. But they you're can't trying, enter. You're, you're trying. You're trying to parse this whole thing, and you're wrong. But they're trying. Phil, they, the, you said one time it's a misdemeanor. And in the right. case of most of these people, this is a first time. But they're asking for um, uh, asylum. So if they ask for asylum, 
you can't let them into the country uh, because they hadn't come in legally. So you, you either hold them. If they didn't want asylum, they could go back to Mexico. Uh, and you take their kids from them. No. How do you they take their kids there, there are parents who will never be able to find their kids again. They haven't kept that's track it. of them. Oh, my Phil, God. That's, that's how bad we were at this thing. That's bad. Come you know, on. if you're going to take an action, you at least I'm better you better better have the goods to, to do it right. And this wasn't doing it right. It was doing it all wrong. No. They figured out how to do it right after they realized how to do no, it wrong. No, they're not doing it right now, Phil. Uh, are they separate? Patrick has. Been. Yes, Patrick. Even if they did fix it now, that doesn't. It, you, you're not going to make up for the, how badly it was fucked up before. I mean, to me, not even being involved in the government and any of that would know enough that there should be some system that if we're going to intake, just like we do in the, in the prison, if we're going to intake people and they have children, you you somehow, because the kids can't speak for themselves, as Jeff had pointed out earlier, um, the parents, you, you take a picture of the child, you take a picture of the child with the parents, something like that, and then you've got a way to identify them so that when whatever the holding is that over with, you can reunite the kids. I mean, there, there were many ways to do it, that they just didn't. So now there are these kids out there that, you know, I mean, they may never find their family again. That's the problem I have with that, that situation. But then I go back even further. Why are we making it all the way to the United States when if the idea is just to escape a bad situation and the first safe country would be Mexico? So... You know, I mean, that's my overall thing. Why are we tracking all the way to the U.S.? Because I think, I think Patrick, let's face it, the Mexico's has some very big problems with, with crime gangs and so on. And this is the very thing they're leaving their countries from. And they don't want to be in Mexico because that situation exists in Mexico as well. And that's the reason why they keep coming north. Because um, they thought this country was a good country... That was helping people like, ref, you know, like that themselves. That we took immigrants. Listen, if I were, if I, if I were, if I, if, I, if I were looking for asylum, I would just get to the border and say, I'm not asking for asylum, but I want, I'm asking to be able to go through here to get to Canada where they'll give it to me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Canada would be nice and nicer. Yeah. Uh, it's the I've been thinking, Alex, about you know, would I leave this country lately? Well, I I, I'm, I'm, asha I'm, a, I'm ashamed of this country, to be honest yeah. with you. I think that what we're doing and the way we're treating people is is not the America that I was taught about in school. I was taught that we, we were very good to people who wanted asylum or wanted a better life and came here for that, you know? That's why my, parent, my grandparents came over here, was for a better life. And, uh, and, and they found a, a, a better life for themselves in the United States. Um, and so uh, that's one of the great things about this country and what we've been able to do in the past. Uh, but n not anymore, you know. I mean, um, we have a president who, let's be honest about it, is racist, is an anti-Semite, is a... Um, uh, what, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, a misogynist, a, a sexist. I mean, he's all these things, and he thinks he can get away with it. You know, by telling me as a Jew that if I vote Democratic, I'm being a traitor to Israel, he can go fuck himself. Yeah. It's like he's trying to force you. you know, and if you weren't is. bothered by that as an anti-Semitic statement, Phil, because that's what anti-Semites say, he's then, yeah. then, uh, then, then you, you should be mad about that, if nothing more. I agreed Alex? with him. Alex, where, yeah. did, where did this all come from? Like, I mean, was this immigration thing a big issue? Wait a minute, let me, let me finish. Got Trump as president. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. would it have been this big if we wouldn't have gotten Trump as president? This thing that immigration was such a big issue, mm -hmm. you know. So, see, so I should be loyal to Israel, Phil. 
you, you have to do whatever you're conscious. No, no, no. Uh, what conscience. I'm saying, what I'm saying is, uh, I'm suppo- he, what he's saying is that Jews should be uh, should uh, should be um, uh, what can we call it uh, supportive, uh, supportive, uh, and uh, of, of 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 Israel. And yet, I think when you should. have had a couple of Congresswomen who were Islamic and were somehow doing the same thing with their own people, that was wrong. Uh, I thought that they were being uh, no, Phil. Uh, no, anti-Semitic. Phil. No, they weren't. Uh, you know, they, they said that uh, the Jews, it's all about the Benjamins, uh, that they they bought uh, the uh, the government, that they bought that the That wasn't media. what they were referring to. They were, she was, they were saying in this they country, did. it's all about the Benjamins. Yes, it is all about the Benjamins, Phil. Well, uh, that's why the NRA know, has managed to keep guns legal. Thank God, because it's all about the Benjamins, Phil. Well, uh, I don't. I think that the uh, well, statements by Omar and Talib are mm-hmm. anti-Semitic. Mm-hmm. They hate Israel and they want to see its destruction. Uh, you know, no, even they the didn't say. They papers, didn't say. They didn't say they wanted its destruction, Phil. They won't even recognize Israel. Israel won't recognize them. Well, good. You know, why should Israel let people in that wanted because to Because they uh, are Congress create- people of the United States, and they should be allowed in so they can see what's happening and investigate what's happening in Israel. And there, no congressman has ever been denied that, Phil, except for last week, the last couple of weeks. Well, I'm glad they were. Well... You know, you you're just throwing everything that America is out the window. And go ahead, it's okay. No. Yes, so we met. Ray's got his hand up. I, I just want to say, Israel is is taking billions and billions of dollars from us every year, and then telling our Congress people they can't come over there. That's just wrong. It's just it's wrong. I don't I don't know how you could say it in any other way. Well, I mean, what they, you're... we should be able to. Huh? It's. You're saying it's all about the Benjamins, but on the other uh, side, it is, it is much about the Benjamins on both sides. And now, I want to say we that give we give money it, to other countries too of that don't like us and and that don't agree with but us. We, we don't we don't give that much money to any other country, not even close he, he to this little plot of to, land. Didn't doesn't Egypt get close to what uh, the, uh, Israel is getting? All right, I'm, I'm done. Somebody wrote on our chat room, uh, more faves is his name. It says, in Germany, Phil would have been a perfect collaborator. <laughs> Where are your papers? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is Phil a little German somehow? No. <laughs> Austrian, that's worse. Austrian and Russian. Uh, but, I mean, it, it, you know, I mean, it's just not what America is about. And, and the, what's hap- happened to these children is just... Uh, the stories that you hear from uh, psychiatrists and so on who've been meeting with these children is that they're they're Poor com- kids. yeah yeah uh, you know I mean they showed that one crying kid a lot on TV a couple of weeks ago uh, and I'm sure if they had stuck a camera in a lot of other kids' faces uh, the same thing would have happened or uh, Josh um, yeah would you agree with me that this is not what America is about? You know, this is oh, what this is what we were taught it was. Yeah, I don't like the the situation down there. I mean, I never felt this was a crisis to begin with. I mean, uh, again, I was trying to say, right? Argue things on policy. If there are people in this country that feel it was a crisis, then okay, so be it. We well, just don't agree. Well, Phil talked but about the now we have to decide, yeah. you know, what to do. Phil talked about the economics of this country and the fact that we might be going into recession, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, what Trump did in the border was a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, uh, he said, we have a problem at the border, we have a problem at the border. We didn't have a problem at the border. Not like that. And right. uh, what he did by his uh, stating it over and over and over again was creating the situation itself, um, and yes, I agree. You know, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna have a, a recession if uh, everybody's going around saying, "Whoops, there's gonna be a recession." Well, then I guess there probably wind, will wind up being a recession. 
yeah. uh, but that doesn't mean there won't be one. And, and uh, Charlene was quite right when she said that uh, all the recessions that we've had in, I think, the last 75 years or so have all been under Republican watch. Do you, uh, uh, do you have you heard in the past Obama, Biden, and, and many other uh, prominent Democrats saying that our borders are porous and that uh, we need to uh, secure our borders. Trump ran on the fact that he was going to secure the porous borders. And these caravans have been coming up in order to challenge that. Uh, do you, you know, don't you see are, are, no. Do you not? Do you no. not want? No. Uh, do you want porous borders? No, I, yeah. it, it, por, porous borders uh, only happen because you are preventing people from coming in. If you have a way for them to come in, uh, you're not going to see borders being porous. And in fact, we will know who the people are that are coming in. But because because we've made the, we've thrown this into the realm of being illegal and impossible. People are taking extraordinary circumstances to get into this country. If we simply allowed them in and said, we'll let you go through the process, then the borders wouldn't be porous. And by the way, you know, there are enough jobs for them in this country because there aren't too many people who want to work, you know, uh, doing people's lawns and carpent, you know, work in their homes and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, our borders have always been porous that way. But if, you know, I want to know what the difference is between porous and uh, open for people to come into this country and to seek their fortune and to do it uh, without feeling intimidated. How many people a year does America receive uh, illeg legally? Uh, do you know? No, I have no idea. Uh, I think last year it was 775,000. Uh, I don't know I why the, I don't know why they're coming here because it's such a shitty country right now. Well, well they're coming here legally, and they're being and between mm -hmm. seven hundred seventy-five thousand to a million, I believe, mm -hmm. are being how many let them, in. How legally. many of them could be considered white, Phil? I don't know. Well, get me that statistic because I, I always thought. I always thought the Latinos were white. Let me put it this way: if you uh, if, if you uh, come into this come, want to come into this country, just come into this country and 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 spend some time here. And you're Islamic; you're going to have a much harder time these days. Yeah, and uh, we uh, we had some issues. Uh, something happened, according to Il uh, Ilan Omar, uh, uh, in 2001. Uh, something happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and now that's something caused us to have to. Was that caused uh, by Islam? Was that caused by Islamics? Uh, it was caused. Uh -huh. It was caused by radical Islamics. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabians. Okay. Our allies. Saudi Arabians, who we make Our ourselves allies. an allies with. Well, times change. No, times don't change, Phil. They've always I've been, been talking that about. Way. I've been talking about the Wahhabis. Uh, for five years. Wahhabis well, have know, nothing to do with this. It, what has to do with this is a shitty country with shitty policies towards everybody, especially women, especially uh, non-Islamic uh, people. They are terrible. And they have caused, a, have caused a great deal of unrest around the world, and yet we kind of pat them on the back and say, okay, because you got oil. And the Iranians uh, uh, have one of the most, uh, uh, one of the worst regimes ever, and their support of terrorism is second to none. And though, and and that's okay. You want to have let them have the Phil, atomic bomb. Phil, our support of terrorism is just as bad. Well, it doesn't matter. Well, what do you mean it, it doesn't matter, Phil? We're not. We're, I mean, we're, Phil, you know, Phil, what, Phil, what, Phil. What shut up a second. Shut are up are a we, second. Shut up a second. What do you mean it doesn't matter? What? We can be that way, but uh, but, but uh, they can't? Well, are we how are many we how many how many bad regimes bombers into churches? Uh, in the, it, yeah, but there are churches in this country. And at the behest of Donald Trump who encourages people to go in and shoot people with guns in churches and everywhere else. This is a man who's given a sense of permission to criminals. 
he didn't wind them up and push them yes, into the church. Yes, he did, Phil. They made a yes, decision on their own. Yes, he did. They, they were full of hate long before Donald Trump came on the picture. Yeah. Well, you know, what's Donald Trump going to do about it? Nothing. Well. Uh, Nothing. We'll see. No. You know, uh, he, he said he was going to do something. Now uh, the news media is saying the NRA has gotten his, uh, his ear. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think he's beholden to them. No, no, he said it, Phil. I heard him say it. It's not just yeah. the news media. He said it. I heard him. What, what, even what did you hear? Name. I heard him say, oh, you know, I'm not going to do it. You go look yourself. You go look. I heard him. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and quote what I heard him say on a video. I, you go I find it yourself. Walked, Goodbye. He walked back uh, these checks, but I don't know that that is it just wasn't. And, uh, and why did to, why did he right walk him back, Phil? Yeah, because right. he has an election coming. No, up, because he I had a he, he had a call he made and talked with the NRA. By the way, an organization that if I were him, I wouldn't put my stake in because they may not even be around by the time the election gets here. Well, they get my hundred bucks a year. Well, they're going to run off with it somewhere because that they're go, they're slowly going out of business, and people who are in that organization are leaving in droves. And these are people who were in in. Uh, we're, we're part of the the mainstay of the of the organization. They're leaving like crazy. So I think that a lot of them were uh, stealing. Getting in, you know, Wayne Lapierre uh, bought one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. He's not one of the suits. guys that quit. No, but he. he well, there he, goes your hundred bucks. Other there goes your hundred bucks, Phil. Right. These guys who quit quit mm -hmm. over that type of. Do issue. you feel good about that, Phil? That your hundred bucks went to giving Wayne Lapierre some suits. Well, I'd rather give Wayne LaPierre some suits and not lose my Second Amendment rights. No, oh, yeah, I see. Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah. Anyway, there's our theme song. Thank God. Oh, uh, wait. A what happened? Oh, I've got problems here with the music. Okay. Sing it. There we go. I'm having some problems. I am having some problems with this other machine. Oh, well. Uh, I'll hum Which the song. Which machine is that? Is another the trash can? No, 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 no. Don't it's, worry, it was okay. Nothing yeah. was that bad. Okay, well, you know, right. I I could start the theme again, and then it'll go up to a certain point and stop. See? Okay, <laughs> all right. I have Doob -doob -doob. to I, I have to reboot the machine. It was doing all kinds of crazy, uh, uh, nutty uh, stuff. So um, we could hum I the theme. I love you, Alex. We could hum the closing theme, but. Uh, and I don't have the music up uh, elsewhere, so uh, I guess. Try this new age one. Om. Yeah. Om. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I'll have to restart that machine. It something went, went hinky with it. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ray. I appreciate it. Josh, thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, um, Charlene. Thank you, uh, 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 Tony. And thank you. <laughs> What happened to Jeff? Huh? Did he ha yeah. Why did Jeff leave? Oh, yeah, no, uh, I don't know what happened to Jeff. He just left. And, of course, uh, our friend in the wheelchair, uh, thank you as well. Because I forgot your name right now. You know, my mind's a blank. It's Oscar. Oscar. Huh? Patrick. Patrick. Darth Pat. Yeah, Patrick. Anyway. Uh, that's it. Uh, why don't all of you give a big wave goodbye, and I will give wave goodbye to you as well, maybe forever. Bye. Thank you. All right. That's it. Um, the um, uh, next up is the uh, a show called the uh, uh, Intersection with uh, a, a wonderful guy by the name of Jack Bishop. He will be here, and uh, maybe I'll come back again tomorrow night at. Uh, uh, at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, you see there's no theme playing because if I start it, it'll go for just a little bit and then it will stop, seeing, because everything on this machine is screwed. Uh, anyway, we'll see you later, everybody. And, uh, you know, as they always say, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, bye. <laughs>